husband's name is Eldred Lawrence Rowe, but we all called him Larry. Larry was born in Long Beach, California. And uh, just before, well, just before we got in the war, but while war was going on in Europe in 1939, uh, Phil Edwin Rowe is his father, and he lived to 96 and only died recently on March 1st, 2013. His mother, Margaret May Eldridge Rowe, uh, predeceased, uh, and she was in her 70s. But uh, together they had quite a, a quite a family, and we're all very family oriented. Well, I know he always talked about uh, riding on the range. I mean, he loved being a cowboy. He loved his grandpa George, who was um, one of the original settlers of the valley. We'll need to have all sorts of stories about mountain lions and bears as he went out hunting for cattle and training his own horse, Sunshine, and it was a Palomino and he gentled it like his grandpa George taught him. Of course he um, raised sheep and cattle and showed them in 4-H as a young boy. We met in Nevada and that's where the ranches I was speaking of were. It just happened that my father was running for the state legislature and he wanted to visit every ranch in the county where we were living and that was the first time I ever saw my husband. He was a really good man. I know how much he loved my mother and, and, I, and I think he was very grateful to her for you know being there and taking care of us. Well he always wanted her to be, he always wanted her with him, he always wanted to be with her. And uh, in fact you know they would talk about going on dates but really they would always bring Heather and I. <laughs> They do a lot of kissing, which my sister and Heather, Heather and I would always groan at, but <laughs> they were always very affectionate like that with each other. We moved to uh, Colorado Springs because the Army had sent us in many places but he wanted mountains again. So we explored a little bit and uh, the Army didn't send us to Colorado Springs although we had hoped. But we came ourselves, been happy in Colorado. <laughs> oh, he was, a, he was a generous man. He liked to give gifts. He liked to, uh, to do things with uh, our daughters more often than just uh, going off and having a date. We'd have a family date. No matter how busy he was, he always um, took time to take us places. He would take us to museums and um, observatories and planetariums and Broadway, off-Broadway plays and concerts. If he had some free time, he, he wanted to spend it with his family. And I just, you know, I can't tell you how many uh, countless hours we spent playing Trivial Pursuit with Dad, and we always knew going into it that he was going to win. He liked reading to his daughters, and that continued right on to his grandchildren. When we were staying with him in Colorado for the summer last year, the ice cream truck would come through his neighborhood and he would buy us ice cream from the ice cream truck even though our mom said no. And whenever we go out, he gets us treats. Good, if we asked him a question about the Revolutionary War, he would go on and on about stuff and we would try to bail each other out of his lectures. <laughs> I really liked how he would always give us treats and say that he loved us and even when he was sick and he always made sure that we knew that he cared about us. Oh, I can say that he would have loved to 
live longer and see how they turned out. We talked about it all the time. He was a lieutenant colonel in the Army, and uh, he loved the Army, and he wanted to serve. He felt that that was exactly what he should do and wanted to do. He was so proud of this country. He was so proud that this country was founded on, on faith, the, the, the democratic republic that, that it was created, and, and the freedoms that we enjoy as Americans. He was so proud of his country. He was such a great patriot. He was especially proud that you know, anybody could come from anywhere in this country and make it. If you were willing to work hard, get an education, didn't matter what country you came from or how poor you were when you got here, you, you could make it in this country and he was so proud of that. He was proud to have been in his, the White House uh, assignment where he guarded the helicopters. He was in charge of the detachment that did the security for the president and he was very, he really enjoyed his armor battalion command where he would, he would get to go out on tank maneuvers and um, with his soldiers and not only, he, he loved working with the soldiers doing the tank maneuvers but he also loved leading the group you know as planning the maneuvers as a battalion commander would. Um, I think the military part caught on too well because we uh, both Heather and I went and ended up in ROTC getting ready for the military and, and I, I stayed in it for about 14 years. He, uh, he would bring home videos uh, when he was in Army recruiting for a little while and uh, we, Heather and I would play him over and over again and do dances for him it like, it wasn't always easy and it wasn't always fair but when freedom called we answered we were there. And I think that inspired us a lot with the military. And he always would say to me and my sister was, with hard work you can do anything. And, and he was right. He was, he was a big believer in work ethic. Um, that was one thing he always talked to us about. There's, any, there's nothing you can't do with your life. So my sister became a helicopter pilot and a, and a C-130 pilot and I'm a doctor. And uh, so I guess that's proof that if you're willing to work hard enough and get the education, he was a big believer in education. Hard work and going to school. And that was, that was what he said. He came to know the Lord a little later in life. And uh, I think was got really serious when my, I was in high school and Heather was in middle school. But you could see as he became to know the Lord, it changed him a lot. He um, mellowed him, made him able to communicate his love with us even better. He was definitely the, the leader of his family and he was proud of being the spiritual leader. He really encouraged us to, to grow in the Lord and to, to know him through, uh, I guess, our choice of media, being discerning, but also, even more importantly, uh, praying and reading the Bible. He took us to youth group and church, and that made a big difference in our lives. Then he transitioned and to a family, a marriage that lasted 50 years and would have kept going, and, and a legacy for Heather and I. And one last thing to say is how much I will miss him, and how much, when I see the things that he loved, I wish you were back. Here is a love, vast as the ocean, loving kindness as the flood, when the prince of life for ransom shed for us his precious blood. Who is love will not remember Who can cease to sing his praise He can never be forgotten Throughout heaven's eternal day